according to ESPN's Football Power Index, the Colts now have a 57% chance to win the AFC South this season after entering last night's game with just a 28% chance to do so. Of course, remember, these two teams will meet again in two weeks in Indy. So, Ryan, should we start taking the Colts seriously now? And that's talking to people who maybe didn't take them seriously before. I mean, I think you take the Colts as seriously as you took them before this weekend. I think we've reached a time in the season where we don't have to go up and down with every win and every loss. This is who the Colts are. They play very good defense. If you don't pressure Phillip Rivers, he can throw the ball to open people. And if you're going to shank punts and allow punts to be blocked, they can score points. But this team is still limited in the pass game. If you put pressure on Phillip Rivers, he will turn the football over. And they can be scored on if you understand how to attack them. And so I still think think they're right there with the Tennessee Titans, but not on the level of the Kansas City Chiefs, Pittsburgh Steelers, or yeah. the Baltimore Ravens. And we still have to remember, they have a quarterback that can't throw a Hail Mary and that can't do a quarterback sneak. So it doesn't matter if it's too long or too short, <laughs> Phillip Rivers can't do it. And so that still scares me. <laughs> I... <laughs> he really wouldn't do the sneak last night. I was watching laughing at home. Um, Ryan, I, I agree with everything you're saying, but I was impressed by Indianapolis tonight. I, I was impressed by the roster and just how well Chris Ballard, the GM of the Colts, has put this thing together. Because, yes, they have a, a few superstars, DeForest Buckner, Darius Leonard, but up and down that team, there are just solid football players on both sides of the ball. And you saw them contributing last night. Guys That's true. were undrafted. Like, you know, mm -hmm. Danico Autry, uh, Grover Stewart. Didn't know guys were still named Grover in the year 2020, <laughs> but apparently that's happening. Guys from this year's draft, which is looking really good, right? Like, uh, you know, Michael Pittman obviously yeah. made some big plays. Of course, um, Naheem Hines and Julian Blackman from this year's draft. Phenomenal player. Naheem Hines emerged Baller. as a running back. My point is this. They don't have to be awesome across the board. They just need to be solid, and this team is solid. They don't make stupid mistakes, and sometimes it's better, it's okay to get a bunch of B-pluses somewhere my Korean mom is at home shaking her head. Mm. But I think the Colts are a good example of Ain't no way that. you can get that. That's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's good for me. That ain't no mean of grades. Uh, now, that's great for me. <laughs> B, 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 plus, B plus average would have been the highest average in my family's history. Listen, y'all, this is the point, okay? What I, believe about the, what I believe about the Indianapolis Colts is what I saw last night is that they have to win games like this. And it won't be a block point for seven. It won't be a shank field goal for 17 yards. This is, we all know what this is going to come down to. This is going to come down to how well can Phillip Rivers perform against teams that's going to yep. stretch and threaten his defense. That defense is elite now. They can play at a very high level. But we mm -hmm. saw when the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson got it going in the second half that the Baltimore, I mean, the Indianapolis yep. Colts Couldn't could not it. contend offensively. They could not keep up. So my level of concern yeah. for Indy, mm -hmm. I'm, all, I'm along the same lines with Ryan, it's about the same because it's really going to all boil down to Quarterback play. I believe they have guys that can get open. I believe Ali Cox is a matchup uh, nightmare. I think T.Y. can come on. We see Pascal playing well. But Phillip Rivers is going to have to be the difference. And I don't know if I'm telling anybody anything new. That's what the hell they signed them to do. But they Marcus, signed Phillip Rivers Marcus, to you, put you, them you, over where they could thought they could potentially go. Yeah. But Marcus is exactly right, and Mina is right at the same time. That's why I tell y'all about my teammates. This team, two years ago, felt like they <laughs> had the type of roster and could continue to build the type of roster that kept them a, that they were a quarterback away. That's why they were so hurt when Andrew Luck re decided to retire, because they felt that they were great everywhere, and they had the quarterback to get them over the hump. They finally Brissett wasn't that guy, and I think they're going to find out down the stretch here, neither is Phillip Rivers. All right, I'm going to be handing out report cards at the end of this show, by the way. So, so far, A-plus Mina, A-minus Marcus, and I would say A-minus to Ryan because your camera just broke up right there, but we'll see if you guys have time to get your report cards in toward the end of the show. Uh, Mina, are the Titans a playoff team? Man, they are right on the border there and obviously as you saw early on their chances were hurt uh, after last night but the problem is unlike the Colts they're not solid across the board that defense is full of problems 
and special teams. We never talk about special teams because nobody seems to care and it's not fun. But guess what? It's the third phase for a reason. And special teams can lose you a football game, much like it did for the Titans last year as well. Yeah. Ryan, what do you think about this Tannehill? Me? Oh, this oh. Ryan. It's supposed to be Ryan, but he was I enjoying Mina. Where are going? Go ahead, Ryan. I was listening so well. I, no, I think I think when you look at the Titans, they, they, they're they deficient. They're, they're almost showing themselves as frauds, right? The, the team that we thought they were early on in the season, we haven't seen of late, whether it's the Pittsburgh Steelers loss, a loss to the Cincinnati Bengals, and now the Indianapolis Colts. We looked at Mike Vrabel's teams and thought that through the three phases of football, they would at least be good everywhere. That was that Patriot way. That was that tough Mike Vrabel coaching. But we haven't seen that in the last yeah. few weeks. Weeks, it seems like they have a formula, and if that formula works, they can win. But with defense playing this way, they're going to have to do more offensively, and I don't think that this team is built that way. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.